This is hopelessly wrong. And if you go there, it doesn't have any snugging, locking effect. So, this is the third mistake generally we do. And how to avoid this mistake? You should stack it properly and in that your left hand will help you. So again we will see, if you hold like that, this is first hitch, pinch it by index finger and thumb. Just after taking first wind, again trap it, catch it. Again you take second wind, again you catch it, hold it by the left finger and hand. Again this is the third one, again you hold it. And now you go in between, press your middle finger, push by the thumb inside and catch by these two and pull it out. And then it is stacked properly, you can see. It should never be elongated. If it is elongated, it is wrong. This is the how? This is the which one mistake? Third or fourth. The last mistake what we do is locking of the last locking knot is too tight. What happens? That this is the hitch. First hitch was correct. First wind was correct. Second wind is correct. Third wind is correct. And the last locking hitch, what you did? You left it and you are tightening this way. Once it is tightened like that, it is locked and it will never go. Try to push it, it will never go. Because you have again angulated, you have twisted your last locking hitch. And now it is completely locked, it will never go. So these are the mistakes generally we do. And how to develop your skill of knotting is, you should never see over the knot also. And don't use your hand. If you are using your hand, stop using now. For how we use hand, that this is the use of hand going here, again going and taking like that, again going here and taking this way. So you should never use your hand, use your finger. I will show you and don't try to see the knot also. Without seeing, practice it. How? Just you hold it here. This is index finger and thumb and you go inside. Now index finger up, thumb up. This is first hitch, trapped by the left hand. Again you go index finger up, thumb up. You don't need to see it, your finger will feel it. This is first wind. Again you go index finger up, thumb up. This is second wind. Again you are here, index finger up, thumb up. This is third wind. Again you go in between. And once you are in between, put your middle finger in this hole. Press by the thumb, go inside, catch it and pull it. And this is the, all the knots are ready. And then you will push it by the knot pusher, it will go nicely. So this way, this is the art of the finger which you should develop. You should never use the hand for knotting. Especially in the bigger one like nylon here, you could do anyhow. But if you will use the smaller one and if the knot is difficult, then it is impossible, you will struggle like anything. So you should must keep in mind. Again, same way, I will show you the rudder's knot, how it is going now. So this is the assistant finger, this is crossing the thread, this is holding by the, and this is index finger up, thumb up, this is first hitch. Again you go here, index finger up, thumb up, and hold it, second wind, first wind. Again, so hand should be not crossed. And this is second wind, this is third wind. And then this is the just stack it properly, this is stacking. And then this is the last locking hitch. If you are using vehicle or PDS, the tail end should must be 6 cm after crossing, so that you will not be short of the thread, isn't it? Sometimes if you have taken very 1-2 cm only, then you have to use artery forceps or something to take the knot into the wind. And this way rudder's knot can be used. Rudder's knot was basically designed for the cataractor. And that's why it is 131 only. But nowadays cataract is seldom used. So that's why Melger knot was introduced. What is this Melger's knot? Melger's knot is basically the same modification of the rudder's knot. Rudder's knot is 131. Melger's knot is 232. That is two hitches are taken first and same way like the rudders, two hitches are taken first. 
followed by three winds. Three winds are taken on the loop, both the limb of the loop, and then one last, two last locking hitches should be taken on the same side of the loop. Just like rudders, melzer is also performed same way, and it is used for more slippery structures like PDS. You should use melzer. Some of the book melzer is written like a modified rudders knot. They have written melzers. Like a modified rudder's knot, but basically the correct name is Melzer's knot, and this is two, three, two, and then with the help of knot pusher, you can push it. So there is no much difference between the rudders and Melzer, and this way it is tightened. Melzer should be used for the slippery structure. PDS is the ideal material for the Melzer. Now after Melzer, the next knot is. T side knot. I hope you might not have practiced also, but it is also a good knot. T side knot has the property that first hitch is taken, and then all the winds will be, would be taken on the long standing thread. So first hitch, and you can see now the subsequent winds will be taken down there. You can see here. This is first wind. This is second one. And this is third, and then it will be locked. Sometime fourth also, some people they take, and then it is locked with the first hitch and first one in between here. It is locked, and you can lock it. You can put it inside the wine, and then this way it is nicely closed. And then you can bring the first hitch nearer. You can bring this first hitch nearer, and then it can be pushed with the help of the knot pusher, and this way you can push it here, and it will go. Now you will say that what is the importance of this one? Why T side has been invented? What is the meaning of T side? T side basically there is a T river in the Scotland. The T river starts from the Aberdeen. And it goes up to the all the good university of the UK is on the side of the Tay River, like the Aberdeen, the Dundee, the Glasgow, Edinburgh, all are on the side of the Tay River. Tay River is just like our Ganga River in our country. Ganga, same way, they have very religious river, Tay River, very beautiful, good river. Now, Tay side name has been given. After that river, if you will see that there is a basic difference, I hope that I, I could make the knot here. Basic difference between the Melzer knot and T side. If you will see in the Melzers or Rodders, these winds are on both the loop. So, if tissue is not snug. Then it will be loose because these both the limb. One limb is giving the traction this side, and other limb is giving the traction this side, isn't it? And if the tissue will get trapped, like suppose there is a tissue, and if tissue is get trapped into this loop, then it is good. That it will be tighter. It will be snug. But if tissue is not trapped in between, then it is loose. So basically, where you are applying over the appendix or cystic duct or ovarian cyst or the structure of omentum, this knot is better. But where you want to get the hanging knot, hanging knot like birth suspension, sacrocolpopexy, in those situation you are on the ligament structure and sometime. Knots are hanging. Hanging means like here. Suppose this is the urethra here. This is the bladder, and here is the urethra, and here is the cooper ligament, isn't it? And suppose this knot is going like that, and it is coming from here. It is coming from the cooper ligament, and then knot is here hanging, isn't it? Hanging means not snug with the tissue. If it is not snug with the tissue. Then it is better to have all the wind on the single thread, so that it will give more resistance. You got it? Now what happens that in the T side knot, 
this is the long limb and then this is the wind and if you see all the winds are all on the single thread isn't it and then it is going like that and it is coming locked here so if it is on the single limb then it is giving more and more resistance to slip back and without locking also suppose now the pressure is going this side if the pressure will go both then it will be more tight you got it this is the difference in the tail side not even it is not snug with the tissue even tissue is not locking with the knot then also it will not lose the property of getting slip back whereas in the rudders or melger it can slip back you got it it is clear so why because in the melger it is on the both the limb and the rudders it is on the single thread and this way you can use the t side knot i will demonstrate you again how to use the t side and we will see here this is the t side knot and just you get it and then you take the first hitch will be taken same way like rudders and you can go from below up and this is the first hitch after that three winds are taking uh, or three or four bo both are used but you leave some gap between first hitch and first wind why because in gap you have to come again to lock it and then these are, these are the three winds are taking in the long standing thread this is a long standing thread and you can take one two and, and then this is will really lock between first hitch and first wind it has to get locked between first hitch and first wind like that and then you can push it with the help of the knot pusher and this way t side knot can be used and this is the t side knot and it can be slipped and it can go there basically it is used for the ligamentous structure tough structure or suspended knot where snugging won't be much beneficial and dumbbell also cannot form because ligament or the tendons they cannot form the dumbbell isn't it and if the dumbbell is not there that means tissue is not trapped and if tissue is not trapped this knot is better t side is better than the rudders and melger now we will see tumble a square knot tumble a square knot is done both way either intracorporeal or extracorporeal here i am showing you extracorporeal same way here also even the extracorporeal tumble you can make like this is you will take it out and both the limb has to come out from the abdominal cavity and then take this is the first wind and then you tie the second wind this is the second wind outside outside the abdomen 90 cm thread and now if you see very carefully this and this is same thread and this and this is same thread isn't it so you have you have to hold the same side of the thread and then make it tumble tumble word means making it straight and this is tumbling once it is tumble now it is ready to slip and you can slip it here and this way this is long thread and you can slip it now it will go easily with the knot pusher or with the maryland also you can push it and then you have to untumble it for untumbling both the end has to be pulled again so this will be untumbled means this straight knot has again converted into a square knot isn't it this is untumbling and then you can finally lock it and for the final lock you can take one c and you can tie it with the help of the maryland and needle holder you can lock it so this way tumble square knot can be tightened and it's a good substitute for the cases like sometime knot pusher is not there sometime something goes wrong in those situation you can make tumble square and you can slip it with the maryland slightly keep the jaw of the maryland needle open and keep it over the knot and then slide it it will go and you can slide it this is one of the option it is basically little difference from the square knot but because in a square knot you are going with the past pointing and in a square knot you are not uh, one hitch is slipped first and then second hitch is going isn't it but here both the hitches has been taken and then you will tumble it so that both together can slip back 
and this is the difference between the simple square knot and this this one now if you are tying the extra corporeal knot like rudders or melzer you should have for continuous structure like what is continuous structure like you try not to like after making a window over the infantile pelvic ligament or like cystic duct you should have the assistant finger here we call without assistant finger it won't be possible to tie the knot nicely and it will help you to prevent the leak of the gas also and then you can push it with the help of knot pusher previously some of the surgeons they were using cobbler's needle this is cobbler's needle what is this cobbler's needle that you can introduce cobbler needle is shoe maker needle there is one eye at the tip and you can introduce it and you can take it out and then you can tie it with the knot pusher like for ovarian and all this was used but nowadays nobody uses much cobbler needle is not because nowadays suture passer can be used if you want and it is better to use needle inside if you have to prick it because pricking by the cobbler needle sometime is more injurious and more bleeding so pricking with the needle is better now laparoscopic needle intracorporeal suturing if you want laparoscopic needle is ideal laparoscopic needle there are many type of laparoscopic needle like curved needle the half circle needle the straight needle you can use but endoscopic needle is more preferred because it has its own advantage endoscopic 1/3 is curved and 2/3 is straight and it is little flattened at this end flattened slightly flattened ethicon is making endoscopic needle and they are supplying it with a 20 cm thread only you can buy it but it may not be available always in those situation you can make any needle endoscopic shape how take two needle holder and make the distal two third straight endo needle has the advantage of curved needle as well as straight needle curved needle has the advantage that it can pick up the tissue from the same plane and straight needle has the advantage that taking it out needle is easy you don't have to rotate and tissue trauma is less these are the certain advantage of the endoscopy although it may not be very practical and preferable to do in the deep pelvic surgery where you have to take a bite over the cooper ligament or you have to take a bite over the vault closure in those situation it may not be possible to take the other tip off because you cannot rotate that much so in those situation deep pelvic surgery the half circle needle is better than the endoscopy but where are ever you are in the superficial surface layer like for the closure of the zero serous layer of the myoma for the anastomosis of the tubular anastomosis for the repair of the injury of the bladder for the bowel anastomosis for the interotomy suture in those situation endoscopy is more preferable because they have less trauma to and easy to manipulate inside and even if you will keep it over the tissue it is safe reason behind that if you are pulling the suture then it will get tailored over the bowel it will not get it, it will not trap the bowel whereas if it is a half circle it will trap the bowel but if it is endoscopy just like a tailor of a tractor it will get tailored and it, it because it is it is not completely curved so it will not entrap into the serosal layer of the bowel or tissue whereas curved needle can perforate sometimes the bowel if suddenly accidentally you are pulling the thread then it will bite and it will perforate so these are few of the advantage of endoscopic needle and few disadvantages also you have to keep in mind when you are using endoscopic needle the suture length should be 8 to 12 side maximum 20 cm for pediatric age group 8 cm is better 12 is good for both and 20 is maximum and you should hold the suture at the middle of the thread and then hide inside the reducer and then push it inside the abdomen so when you are pushing it in you should must try to put it by hiding it how to introduce we can see here that this is the needle going this is the hidden needle in the reducer and this is the endoscopic needle and drop it over the bowel there is no harm dropping over the bowel because even if you will drop it 
it is not going to yes, trap the bubble. And endoskin needle has the advantage that up to 35 mm needle also can be introduced with the 10 mm cannula because most of the part of the needle is straight, isn't it? So you can introduce through the 10 mm cannula, whereas 35 mm curved needle is impossible to go through the cannula. You have to go percutaneously or directly through the wound after holding the needle sutured nearer the needle. This way you have to keep in mind before in introducing it. You should also try to avoid and missing of the needle here. Like here in this case we can see that surgeon is holding the needle and trying to align. This is wrong. You should not try to catch the needle. You just drop it over and then press by the